everybody. Wow. Lots of y'all this morning. It's good to see you. Hey. How are you? Good. Excellent. Better than I was last week. How's that? <laughs> Better than I was last week. I can breathe this week, so that's, this is a very good thing. So why don't we start off with our focus statement, shall we? So here we go with all the V's, right? Vim, vigor, vivacity, vivaciousness, voluptuousness, all the V's. Here we go, right here, and let's go together. And we embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. I believe you. I believe you this morning. It sounds good. I believe you. Excellent. So when we walk into this place and when we live from this statement, this, this is our focus statement, we live from this statement of emboldening people to live their highest potential. What we do is we do that together collectively as a community, as a diverse and inclusive community. And this month, our theme is promoting diversity and inclusion. Better for you there? Yeah. Um, our theme is promoting diversity and inclusion. And it's part of the larger year theme of spirituality in action. That we know that we don't just get to sit in here on our cushions um, and our cushions and not take this out into the world and not live it out into a larger sense of being. It's good to come in and experience it. And it's even more wonderful, I feel, when we take it out beyond the walls. Would you agree? Yes. So this morning we are talking, the theme that was provided for us by Centers for Spiritual Living uh, was written by, the outline for it was written by Reverend Sunshine Day, and she is the spiritual director for Downey Center for Spiritual Living. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Reverend Sunshine. She is truly a ray of sunshine, if not the whole sun itself. Um, and so her talk title that she shared with us uh, this morning is Unique But Different. Unique But Different. It's already different. It's already unique, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. What does that mean, unique but different? And so this morning at this morning's uh, morning table, which we do every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we had a very interesting discussion around this very topic. What does it mean when we say unique? When I say the word unique, or you hear the word unique, what is that, how does that resonate within your being? One, one of a kind. Different in a good way, okay? Special, being an individual. Original, okay? So there, it kind of feels like a, there is this positivity to it, right? Serena said different in a good way, right? So there's this positivity when we hear the word unique. Now what if we say the word different? How do you feel when you hear the word different? Not as positive, maybe, okay. What else do we hear? Strange, odd, confusing, special, unknown, separate, scary. Myself. <laughs> right on. Right. It's interesting how our language does this, isn't it? And how we perceive our language. That unique is like, wow, it's sparkly. Ooh, it's unique. It's kind of cool. It's kind of awesome. Whereas different is like, ooh, well, she's different. <laughs> right? Or, that's different, you know, um, that it, it's the connotation, the feeling behind it isn't always necessarily positive, um, but maybe it could at least be neutral, right? Because if we think about different and we celebrate differences and we look at differences, then what are we really talking about? We're really talking about contrasts, right? 
there must be something that is different from something else when we're talking about contrast, per se. Not necessarily that one is better than the other, but yet in the way that we have a tendency to use different, we have a tendency that different all isn't always a positive thing. So I would like for you to go ahead and breathe in for a moment and uh, close your eyes for just a moment and see about these series of statements. Have you ever experienced the unease of walking into a room where no one else looks like you? Have you ever experienced the unease of being judged for leaving early to pick up your children? The frustration when you are not asked for your opinion or talked over in a meeting? The frustration of asserting your opinion only to be labeled as aggressive or angry. The annoyance when people presume you are less committed to your family because you are a man. The annoyance when people presume you are less committed to your work because you are a mother. The pressure to be superhuman and not talk about how you are really feeling. The pressure to fit in the anxiety of sharing your personal life because most people around you are heterosexual or cisgender. The anxiety of how others will react to your disability. The awkwardness of being mistaken for someone else. The awkwardness of being misgendered. The awkwardness when people assume that the white colleagues are in charge. The awkwardness when people assume that the male colleagues are in charge. The strain of feeling that you must do more because you don't have children. The strain when conversations are not in your first language. The exasperation of being labeled entitled and that you lack drive. The exasperation when people assume you don't have relevant skills or ambitions because of your age. The indignation of feeling that your promotion is not celebrated as much as others. The indignation when you think the only reason you got the promotion was because you are a woman. I'm breathing that in. I'm letting it go. These are all examples of differences, of how we've experienced difference, perhaps or how we've experienced uniqueness, perhaps. But the way that society and our socialization into society, yeah, our socialization into society has labeled us different somehow. And somehow our differences have been made wrong rather than celebrated. Somehow our differences have excluded us from the whole that we are separate and apart from rather than included. When we talk about unique, it feels like that person or those people that it's unique, it's, it's this positive thing that we're talking about that is like, wow, it's really unique. She's really unique. He's really unique. He has a unique perspective. May I use really mean and I apologize for saying really in front of me. But that it's unique. And it's positive and wow. And it feels inclusive. Uniqueness feels inclusive and yet somehow elevated in some way or special in some way. But when we say 
different, there's a feeling of exclusion. There's a feeling of separation. Notice when you feel different, there's the, they're different from me, there's this kind of, there's this tendency to want to, like, step back or lean back, even if it's not physically, but emotionally or um, psychologically, what have you, that there's this, this tendency to um, shirk back from. So difference often is stemmed in or rooted in fear. And what I invite us to do is I invite us to look at our differences not as something that is separate, but something that is to be celebrated. At least look at our differences from a neutral place of simple contrast. And that's what we talked about last week when we talked about diversity. Diversity is naturally inherent. The divine already took care of diversity. Everyone in this room brings their unique individualized expression of self to the party, to the room. So there is a diversity that is here, that is natural, that is absolutely here. It's inclusion is where we get to practice being intentional. We can be diverse without being inclusive. And as you heard that list, as you were listening to that list, that list is, we can be diverse, but still feel excluded. So we have the uniqueness, we also have the difference, we also have the diversity, and are we also being inclusive? Are we also living from an inclusive place? Are we also living an inclusive life? Are we swinging our arms wide open and including, and seeing things from a larger perspective, appreciating the differences, appreciating the uniqueness, celebrating the uniqueness, celebrating the differences. She calls this book, uh, Tracy Brown, who we're using her book this month, it's called Stained Glass, Stained Glass Spirit. And she call, she's entitled the book Stained Glass Spirit for a reason. Before I do that, I want to share with you, don't forget that on Tuesday, starting at 6 o'clock, we have an online book study for three weeks, three Tuesdays in a row, for free, free online. Um, you just have to sign up on the website to study this book with us. But what she talks about is the stained glass. So look at our beautiful stained glass in this room, if you will. Take a look at that stained glass. What's amazing about the stained glass is the light coming through and looking at the stained glass as a whole, it's unique and it's beautiful and the light shines through, yes? And then we look at each individualized piece, each unique piece of the stained glass. And if one of those pieces were not there, the beauty of the stained glass itself would be different, would be altered, yes? And so each piece of the glass is absolutely essential to the beauty of the whole. Yet each piece of glass remains individualized, remains unique, but they work together in harmony to create something that is larger and greater than the individual sum parts. And that is the way it is with community, too. Each of us is a piece of that stained glass. Each allowing our individual, each being that presence and allowing the light to shine through us, allowing spirit to shine through us, working together in harmony with all of the other individualized pieces to create community, but yet we each get to remain unique. We get, each get to remain individualized. We each get to allow our own love light to shine through, our own love intelligence to shine through each and every one of us. So as a stained glass community, Each individualized piece is integral to the whole. 
And that is the way it is for us in life, and that's the way it is for us in our community, and that's the way it is in life in the larger peace. That each one of us is an individualized expression of the divine. We are the divine made manifest. Jesus was the great teacher. He was the example, not the exception. These things and greater shall you do, he said. Right? So looking at this, each one of us is the light. Each one of us is that piece of stained glass. Each one of us is the divine. We come together, and we have the opportunity to come together and see the divine in each other. To see the beauty in each other. To see and recognize and honor the uniqueness of each other and the difference of, this, of each other. Each one of those is a different shape. Each one is a different color. Each one, even though the, they mirror on either side, is a different piece of glass with its own bubbles, its own texture. And any one of them missing changes the beauty that is. Likewise, any one missing here changes the beauty that our, the beauty that our community is, changes the love that our community is doesn't make it bad, doesn't make it wrong, doesn't make it um, less than. It simply changes the makeup. But how wonderful it is to celebrate and honor that which is present, the divine within each one of us. How wonderful it is to honor and celebrate our own interdependence. We are not separate and apart from each other. No two of us are the same as Kim mentioned in the invocation. No two of us are the same. Yet we all come from the same source. We, are all, we all come from that one life that lives, moves, breathes, and has its being in through and as each one of us. So we have the opportunity to see that in one another. And so when we say the words namaste, when we say the word namaste, which is Sanskrit, meaning the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. That is perfect unto itself. And Tracy takes this idea one step further, and she invites us to move from namaste to ubuntu. And ubuntu is a Zulu philosophy, it's a Zulu word from South Africa. Ubuntu means humanity, but as a greeting, what is behind that greeting is, I am because you are. I am because you are. Recognizing our interdependence, that we are all one, that without you, I am not wholly me. How does that feel? To recognize that we are all brothers and sisters and siblings in this one life. And that each one of us is absolutely necessary for the life and the consciousness on the planet. That the loss of any life diminishes the experience of this one life in this moment. And when we try to separate ourselves and say, no, I'm not part of that. No, I am not the same as this other person. No, we uh, are different, wholly different, using different in that negative connotation from this group of people. What we are creating is we're creating that separation, and when we create that separation, outside, it's because we are feeling separate inside. That we have forgotten who we are, we have forgotten our own divine nature, that we are one with the one. That the divine lives, moves, breathes, and has its being in through and as each one of us, and we in it. So that truly there could never be any separation, but there is a joyous, magnificent celebration of the diversity, of the beauty that already exists. It's up to us to just simply open up and wake up to it and become aware of it and embrace it wholly and completely and fully to the best of our ability. To stand and look into each other's eyes and say, the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. 
and to look into each other's eyes and breathe the same breath and allow the breath to breathe us because truly is the divine breath, the divine life breathing each and every one of us. To allow that divine life to breathe us and breathe us together in unison, in harmony. And look into each other's eyes and say, I am because you are. So I invite you to turn to somebody near you. You knew this was coming. Don't tell me you didn't. I invite you to turn to somebody near you. Take a breath together. Just breathe together. Feeling that life, breathe together. Look into each other's eyes and say, I am because you are. Believe it this time. Make me believe it this time. Let's do it again. I am because you are. Breathe together again. And acknowledge this, beloved, in a way that is comfortable for each of you. So Amy Steinberg was here last night. Oh. <laughs> so Amy Steinberg was here last night. And we had a phenomenal concert. For those of you who were, who were here, wasn't it phenomenal? <laughs> now, would Amy accept that from you? <laughs> Let's try that again. Wasn't last night's concert phenomenal? Amy, you would still probably be a little shaky on that, but okay, I'll, I'll take it for this morning, Reali recognizing that not everybody has had their coffee yet. Um, <laughs> so, um, Amy was here, and she was sharing her unique talents and gifts with us last night, and her, uh, just her magnificence and her individualized expression, her divinity, and it was absolutely wonderful and powerful and amazing. And... Uh, she shared something last night that was like, oh, well, you know, there is only one mind. And she was sharing that, talking about our individualized uniqueness, that it is the fact that you are sitting here in this moment, in this body, with this nose, and these ears, and this hair, and having this experience in life, whatever experience in life that it is, in this moment, the chances of that happening are one in one quadrillion. Quadrillion. Think of how many zeros that is, right? One in one quadrillion. And the magnitude of that, and each one of us is a unique expression of it. There are no two of us that are alike. One in one quadrillion. Quadrillion. How many zeros is that? No idea, right? A lot. A lot of zeros. Twelve zeros. There you go. Tony came up with the answer. Gold star for the day. So, Twelve zeros, which is also, wow. That's right. The number gets bigger with every ancestor you have. Absolutely. But when you think of, wow, 12 zeros, 12, hmm, also breaks down to three, right? Which is the number of the divine. Hmm. Spirit, soul, body, spirit, mind, body, the triune nature of the divine, the creative process. So even in our mathematics, the creative process is there, isn't it? Coming into form, spirit coming into form, and spirit and form returning to spirit. 
So each one of you is one quadrillionth of an opportunity or one quadrillionth of a chance of being here. And you showed up. You showed up to have this experience in life. And isn't it amazing then to recognize that each one of these people sitting next to you and each one of these people that are, you are encountering in your life also are one in one quadrillion. That makes us all pretty unique, huh? It makes us all pretty special, huh? Shows our common humanity, shows our common divinity. So when you go home and you look in the mirror, it's like, ooh, you're special. I am unique. Let's hear it. I am unique. <laughs> All right, let's try it together. What about special? And what about love? And quadrillion? <laughs> Just had to for fun, you know? All right. Fifteen zeros. Fifteen zeros, Tony. There, so, who knows? Fifteen, twelve, so there you go. It's a lot, it's still a lot of zeros. Hmm. So let's just breathe this in. Recognizing our uniqueness, celebrating our differences, Honoring our inclusivity. Knowing that each one of us is love made manifest. And each one of us has the opportunity to live our highest potential. That is what we've come here to do. The purpose of life is to live. So each one of us has the opportunity to come here and live our highest potential. And by divine example, we go forth from this place emboldening others to do the same. Remember that each one of us is a piece of the stained glass. Each one of us is absolutely necessary. And so Ubuntu, I am because you are. And so it is. And so I invite our practitioners and our core council to please stand and surround the sanctuary. These beloveds hold this community in prayer on a daily basis, and they respond to your prayer requests. If you do have a prayer request, um, you may uh, email it to us at prayer at riversidecsl.org, and then there's also a box out in the lobby that says prayer requests on it, and you can drop your prayer request in there and know that all of these beloveds will um, continue to hold you in prayer and lift you high in love and prayer. So let's come together in consciousness now, shall we? I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable to do so. And coming together. I recognize that there's only one power, one presence, one life, one love, one infinite eternal being. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was love. And that which love did not create was never ever created. And so I recognize that because there is only this one, there is a unity in diversity. It brought forth all of creation, all of life, as a diverse, magnificent, beautiful expression of itself. And it lives, moves, breathes, and has its being always and in all ways. And that the universe itself is the divine body, the divine manifestation of this one life. And so I know that this is life is absolutely perfect, it's absolutely whole, it's absolutely complete in and of itself. I know that it is love, that it is life, that it is joy, that it is abundance, that it is harmony and divine right order and divine right action. I know that it is bliss and joy. And it's simply the oneness that is back of all through all and as all. And so I recognize that I am one with that one, that the who of who I am has to be made up of that wondrous, magnificent, divine star stuff. That my very essence, my very consciousness is the essence and consciousness of this one life. Expressing itself uniquely 
in, through, and as me. And I honor that divinity. I honor that divine wisdom, that high idea, that love that brought forth creation. I celebrate it, and I give thanks for it. And as I know that this is true of me, I know that this is true of all of creation. I know that this is true of everyone present here this day. That each one is made in the image and likeness because each one is the emanation and impartation of the one life, of the one love, of the allness and fullness that simply is the isness of all. And so I speak my word this day for this community, recognizing that, that we are a beloved community, that we are a stained glass community, that we come together recognizing and celebrating our uniqueness, our differences. We recognize that each one of us is part of the whole. Each one of us is a piece of stained glass, allowing our light, allowing the light to shine through us, coming together as a, co as a whole, as a collective, as a cohesive unit of beauty. And yet each one maintains their uniqueness, maintains their individuality. I celebrate it and I honor it. And I am so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for the love that is present here. I'm so grateful for the light that is present here. I'm so grateful for the work that our community does in the larger world. And I'm so grateful for the work that each individual person in our community does within themselves. Returning again and again to living their highest potential. Returning again and again to knowing that their lives are transformed by being the power and the presence of love. And allowing the power and presence of love to work through and as them. And so we do this collectively as our community. And we take this out beyond these walls, out into the world. Living our faith, living our spirituality. I give thanks for all of it. And I release this word into the law, knowing that it is done. I simply let it be so. Amen.